Let's take it. Let's take a look. You've seen the videos of brazen smash and grabs like these, okay. often carried out in broad daylight. It's an absolute threat. A Chicago area Louis Vuitton raided by 14 hooded suspects, making off with over $100,000 worth of luxury items. A flash mob style heist at an Oakland area Nordstrom. Hey! This New York jewelry store, windows smashed in with hammers. Federal authorities and retailers are now sounding the alarm about the growing danger of organized retail crime that is sweeping the country. For a while now, I've been attempting to slowly ease the political left into admitting and responding to the undeniable truth on the ground in major US cities. Organized retail theft is harming many communities and we need to be real about it. For one, I don't find it politically advantageous to deny what everyone can witness for themselves. But more importantly, the left loses credibility when its prominent voices claim they want to build a better society for ordinary people while actively making unmerited justifications for crap that actually makes life worse. A prime example of the madness is San Francisco, where organized retail theft has gotten so bad that half the stores in its downtown area have shuttered. A recent CNN report revealed San Francisco's dysfunction with a local Walgreens hit with three thefts in just 30 minutes. Our Kyung Law visited one Walgreens that's hit by shoplifters more than a dozen times a day. It happened three times while she was inside. In the 30 minutes we were at this Walgreens, <laughs> we watched three people, including this man, steal. Did that guy pay? Did that guy pay? He didn't pay. Now that store has been dubbed the most robbed Walgreens in the country. And I'm sure local political leaders must be super proud to foster the kind of environment necessary to win that honor. I'll get to more on that in just a minute. But first, I want to get to the cover story that the left has fully bought into. That these thieves are desperate. That they're living in poverty and have no choice but to steal because they need to feed their families. Now first off, the assumption that crimes must be committed by the poor is, you know, pretty damn defamatory toward disadvantaged individuals. Okay, I've been I've been quiet for for a bit now. Um First of all, yeah, I I was wondering if it was going to come around, but now it seems like we've gotten past kind of the intro of the video. Um Okay, but like are the stores closing because of the crime? Are are the stores closing because of the the robberies and the shopliftings? Is that the case? I don't know because that information is not presented in the video. It it's information that you might assume based on the construction of the story so far, but there's no data there to back that up. Um now if there I and also which stores are being targeted here. I I don't know. I don't I, I I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that Louis Vuitton uh has like a, a really good insurance policy on its uh, retail locations. You know? I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that like mom and pop stores are not the ones being targeted by organized retail theft rings. And I'm also going to go out on a limb to guess that wage theft is still, even if there is a massive spike in the organized, uh, in organized retail theft, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that wage theft is still going to be astronomically exponentially larger than uh, the amount of theft that is going uh, on in stores. Secondly, that claim is, you know, without merit. 
But let's compare economic rough patches and how they impacted crime. Let's look at the data. Take a look at this pretty incredible chart using data from the John Jay College of Criminal Justice on crimes committed in New York City between 2006 and 2022. Now you'll notice that there isn't a notable spike in major commercial retail crimes during or immediately after the 2008 economic collapse. In other words, the economic desperation that- But you, you will notice that uh, in, in, <laughs> in like the COVID times, uh, COVID lockdowns happened and then massive spike in uh, organized crime. I wonder if that has anything to do, uh, I wonder if that has anything to do with the economic conditions for people on the ground. I, I wonder. Americans were experiencing during the last Great Recession did not translate to a significant uptick in retail crime. But the data on this chart makes clear that there was a massive spike in retail crime during the COVID pandemic. And perhaps, just perhaps, factors other than poverty and desperation account for it. Now look. Well, yeah, uh, honestly, the most important factor, often I'll shorthand it by saying poverty, but the most important factor is, uh, is economic inequality. Um, if there are, if, if like the entire area you live in is poor, generally speaking, not, not going to be a ton of like interpersonal crime necessarily. Uh, if the entire area you live in is rich, also not going to be a whole lot of crime. Um, but if you have a bunch of desperately poor people living next to a bunch of uh, incredibly wealthy people, that is the like kind of the ideal situation under under which crime occurs. It costs thirty dollars for a box of cereal in San Francisco. Of, por of course, people steal. Yeah. Look, to be fair, but I, I wonder. You know, you know, uh, she she talked about how you know not not only poor people steal guys. So you know. I'm, I'm, you know, clearly we're going to see at some point an insanely wealthy shoplifter, someone who just makes their lift, their living by shoplifting in San Francisco, you know, lives in a high rise penthouse or, uh, you know, own, owns a nice little, little stretch of land. The, the one man that we saw in the earlier CNN video could potentially fall into the category of a lone thief who stole a little something because he was hungry. I don't know, but I'm not really interested in petty crimes. The real problem is the ongoing and unmitigated organized crime that we're all paying the price for. The issue- Okay, but when leftists are talking about not really giving a shit, if someone uh, like shoplifts, they're, they're talking about like people who are stealing like baby formula or like food or like sh high hygiene supplies. You know, that's generally who people are talking about. Uh, and also if like someone shoplifts like a TV, they're not going to lose any sleep over it. Um, if we're talking about like organized crime syndicates doing crimes, well, then that's a bit of a different circumstance. I don't think any leftist, even the very brain poisoned ones, I don't think any of them would be like, yeah, yeah, organized crime uh, committing robberies is like, you know, not not that big of a deal. I don't think even like really brain poisoned lefties would uh, would be saying that. So I feel like this straw man is already being thoroughly constructed in front of our eyes. My wife worked retail for years. Every store has insurance on this and they don't care. It's just a write-off. Yeah, again, if it's not a mom and pop operation, there, there's probably going to be insurance. But uh, yeah, I wonder if organized wage theft is going to be brought up. You know, the systematic theft of wages, I wonder. Issue has now become so out of control that the federal government is getting involved. 
Federal authorities now warn it's become an absolute threat to public safety and public health, declaring that violent gangs, dangerous international crime syndicates, and even groups with suspected ties to terrorism are increasingly dabbling in organized retail crime across the United States. Here's more on that. In April, three people were arrested in connection with an organized retail crime operation that allegedly targeted California Home Depots, authorities recovering $75,000 worth of stolen goods. And Homeland Security officials say the organizations have suspected ties to drug trafficking and terrorism financing. They're crime syndicates that could be tied to local gang networks that maybe have established uh, networks either from the Chilean or Colombian threats or Romanian crews coming in from Eastern European that are comfortable in certain cities. According to the company, this one crew robbed various stores more than 20 times, allegedly stealing a total of $135,000 in merchandise. Now, Homeland Security officials are also concerned about other groups, including the Aryan Brotherhood and crime rings from Eastern Europe and South America, using organized retail theft to raise funds for their criminal organizations. Raul Aguilar, who serves or oversees international organized crime cases for Homeland Security. Yeah, I guess I, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure I, or sold on the idea that these people robbing from Walmart is meaningfully hurting these communities. I, I don't know that I'm necessarily sold on that concept. I, I think that it's bad to steal generally speaking, and I think that there are definitely social conditions that contribute to people getting involved in organized theft, but I'm also not that concerned about Home Depot being robbed from. Um, yeah, like, Home Depot... Home Depot apparently has like a profit margin of like around 10.75%. Like hell, even even like some numbers I'm looking at here just on a quick Google um is uh like sometimes 34%. Um they're they're a 17 billion dollar company. Like I'm not I'm not worried about them going under because a few organized crime syndicates have siphoned off like uh, I don't know, uh, $75,000 worth of merchandise. That's a lot. And you know what? Those people who stole that merchandise got caught by the police. So I guess I'm not entirely sure. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm not entirely sure like what, <laughs> what, what the issue is here. The police are working on it. They're catching these guys. Um, hey, IP a lot. How you doing? Security says there are definitely ties between certain organized retail thieves and drug trafficking organizations, including some of the cartels identified by the United States government as a global threat. Yeah. Crim criminal gangs are tied to other criminal gangs. Yeah, they, they, have, they have connections with one another. Organized crime isn't great, but the best way to combat it is by recognizing the conditions under which it thrives and then you know, making those conditions hostile to the thriving of organized crime. Hey, Metal Kitty Mom. Well, punky gal, look, you're you're bringing up the decline of murder rates, okay? And sure, the murder rate might might have declined, but think of the precious precious property. In addition, Aguilar also says that some of these networks are tied to the terrorist financing networks around the world. Now, a lot of these thieves are repeat offenders who are emboldened enough to casually steal in broad daylight. Another alleged repeat offender, this Delaware woman, Ayana Duramis. 
who authorities say has been on an organized retail crime spree for years. In February, she was caught on surveillance, allegedly stealing two Nespresso machines worth nearly $2,000 from a New Jersey Bed Bath & Beyond. And then, here she is again at a nearby Home Depot a week later, raising a hammer at a Home Depot employee who tried to stop her. Now, all of this criminal activity comes at a cost to all of us. Some of us, the most economically vulnerable, pay a bigger price. For instance, a Homeland Security Investigations report issued last year said estimates regarding organized retail crime found the average American family will pay more than $500 annually in additional costs due to the impact. I, you know what? I want to I want to I want to check that. That sounds kind of like bullshit. Let's see, is this it? Oh, interesting. I will, I will point out here in a, in a slightly petty way that uh, this is attributed to Levin et al. While the ABC News story is actually by Mike Levine uh, with an E at the end there. So, um, little bit uh little bit little bit off there uh non-binary superpowers uh text to speech is five is a five dollar minimum They want random citizens to act as security for big corporations. I mean, that cost eventually gets passed, maybe. Maybe. Or sometimes it just gets absorbed as a tax write-off. Can you read my message out? You're asking for a lot of work from me for a $3 dono. PSA, do not shoplift at Target. They may opt to let you steal many times simply so you, they have enough evidence to put you in jail. They have a forensic lab that's so good the FBI used them F when FBI labs are backed up. Uh, yeah, not like, guys, if you, if you shoplift a lot, you're going to get slapped with like, you know, a, a lot of charges. Do, just don't do it. Okay. That's oh wait. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's see. I wanted. I wanted. To, I wanted to check that quote here. Do 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 do. I just want to. Uh, I want to know how they arrived at the figure of uh, around five hundred dollars gets passed on to uh, consumer prices. I want. I want to know how they figured that uh, number. Issued last year. Okay. They don't link to the Homeland Security Investigations report. Let's find it, shall we? Okay. Nope. $500. Okay. Estimates reveal over organized re uh, retail crime costs federal and state governments nearly $15 billion in lost tax revenue, not including lost sales tax. It's estimated the average American family will pay more than $500 annually in additional costs due to the impact of ORC. ORC is low risk, high reward income stream for domestic and transnational criminal organizations that greatly impacts interstate and international commerce, the overall economic security of the United States. Um, oh, hey, 
Uh, also, this report in the previous paragraph says uh, organized retail uh, crime is not shoplifting, and these crimes are not victimless. So, yeah. Let's not equate people being okay with uh, shoplifting necessary items with uh, organized retail crime. And that is a, a statement that comes to you from ICE. You know, this is a, a, a report put out by ICE. So, you know, that that's cool. Um, let's see here. Act. That's not a small amount of money for the nearly half of America. So, by, by the way, um, there's no citation in this uh, report for their $500 figure. Like, a at all. It's the one time this figure is ever even, like, given. Um, and, uh, at no other point is there any other mention of how they got that number. They just kind of pull, pulled it out of their ass. You know, show, show your work, Ice. American households who reported that they could not afford a $400 emergency. And that was data from the Federal Reserve prior to the pandemic and prior to the inflation driving up living costs even more today. Since stores are closing in response to the uptick in organized retail theft. Okay, you've said that multiple times. C cite your sources. Which stores are closing because of organized retail theft? You've said it multiple times, and you haven't pointed to any instances of that happening. You just hand-waved towards the fact that San Francisco has a lot of places shutting down. And I have no idea if that's a result of uh, a massive theft wave or not, because you haven't presented any information about that. Workers are losing their jobs. Walgreens alone has shut down five stores in San Francisco due to theft since the retail crime epidemic began. Hmm. Have they, though? Ha have they done that due to theft? Let's see. Now, they did put out a statement that said it was because of retail theft. But, uh, weirdly enough, um, doesn't turn out that that was actually the reason they were closing those stores. I, I know that because I actually have looked into the claim that Walgreens shut down a bunch of its San Francisco locations because of, uh, retail theft. I just happen to have that information handy in my brain. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this real quick. Walgreens may have overblown concerns about retail theft at its stores, an executive said on a recent earnings call. So, folks, here's a little secret. Here's a little, little seekeroonie, okay? Um, when companies put out press releases or anything like that, sometimes they can be telling a fib. They can be um, they can be doing PR for themselves, you know, to achieve a certain goal, you know, that they might want to achieve, either publicly or behind the scenes. And sometimes they're telling the truth, but the way you can tell definitively when they're telling the truth and when they're lying is when they have public earnings calls. Because that's when they tell their shareholders exactly what's going on and uh, what their shareholders need to be concerned about. Maybe we cried too much last year. The pharmacy chain's chief financial officer, James Kehoe, said on last Thursday's call with investors, 
Kehoe noted the shrink rate uh, inventory lost to due to theft, fraud, or damage decreased from 3% a year ago to 2.5% in the second half of 2022. Literally, less things are being stolen from Walgreens than were previously being stolen from Walgreens. Flashback, in October of 2021, Walgreens announced it was closing five San Francisco stores due to organized retail crime in the city. The following month, San Francisco Police Department data showed the five stores set to close had fewer than an average of two reported shoplifting incidents a month since 2018. So... I mean, th this this story about Walgreens locations being being closed in San Francisco is like three years old now, like t two, three years old. Like the the most recent the, the, this article that I'm citing right now that I found in like three seconds on Google came out seven months ago. So I don't know. I don't know about this one, guys. Now, keep in mind that those on a fixed income now have to spend more of their resources to travel even further in order to purchase groceries and other household needs. But those added financial costs we all have to pay to accommodate organized criminals is nothing compared to what some retail workers are dealing with as they try to earn an honest living. Coordinated groups are targeting stores. Millions of dollars worth of goods. Retailers say they're growing more violent, putting shoppers and workers at risk, sometimes with tragic consequences. What goes through your mind when you realize that your dad was essentially killed over three power washers? You can't imagine that any piece of equipment in Home Depot is worth a life. When you saw the video, of what happened to your dad. What was going through your mind? Wish it would have been me. That worker was 82-year-old Gary Razor, a retiree working at the Home Depot in Hillsboro, North Carolina. He sadly died after being shoved to the ground by an alleged thief who was then arrested, luckily, on a murder charge. The case against him is still pending. Now, there are other, there are other examples like the following. At a Home Depot in Pleasanton, California in April, Blake Mose, a 26-year-old employee set to be married in August, was fatally shot after he tried to stop a suspected thief. Two people have been arrested on murder charges in that case. Now, these two victims aren't even a fraction of the other countless workers who have been assaulted as these thefts take place. Now, I think it's worth noting that Literally every major workplace tells their employees to uh, not get involved or in front of or try to stop people who are trying to shoplift. Primarily because it can escalate to incidents of, incidences of violence. And those companies don't want a lawsuit from employees. They also don't want... Uh, you know, people to be killed on their premises. It's bad for business. Um, they also don't want the bad PR. Now, if you're LARPing as a socialist who pretends to value labor, maybe your act would be more believable if you showed just an ounce of concern for the workers. But I don't know. That must be a bourgeois concern of mine. So what now? What are the possible solutions? The National Retail Federation wants the federal government to... I mean, given the fact that you're introducing that comment, you know, almost 10 minutes in a 14-minute video, um, 
I, I'm going to say it's not the primary concern you have while bringing up this topic. Because uh, it, you're, you're talking about the crime of retail theft, which leftists, you know, are, are just don't prioritize. You know, it, it's bad, but, like, also there are bigger problems. Um, but then you conflated that with murder. And uh, I, I hesitate to say this, but I think it might be true. Um, socialists are generally against murder. G generally speaking. Um, the straw man constructed here is just insane. I don't know who she is shadow boxing here, but this is deeply weird. They want security or vigilantes to shoot shoplifters. That's the end goal. I mean, I, I genuinely don't know what other solution is being asked for here other than like a police officer in every Home Depot. To enforce more regulations toward online sellers like Amazon, eBay, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace. These are places where the thieves sell the stolen goods to which the federal government has taken some action on. For instance, the newly passed Inform Act now requires online retailers to verify certain information about their vendors and sellers in order to combat the sale of stolen goods. Online marketplaces that do not comply with this law could face more than $50,000 in fines for each violation. But retailers argue that this is not enough and would like Congress to allocate funds for a federal task force targeting organized retail crime. I'm not really sure if that's necessary. There are other proposals, though, in Congress. Well, wait, what, what do you think is necessary? You've been shadow boxing against people who are just not terribly concerned about, you know, uh, Walmarts or Home Depots being robbed. Like what? You, if you don't want an organized task force to address this on a national level, what do you want? Do you want the cop in every single business? Like, what? what's the policy here? This as well. The Combating Organized Retail Crime Act, which would establish a coordinated multi-agency response and create new tools to tackle evolving trends in organized retail theft was introduced by the House of Representatives in February. We'll see if that legislation goes anywhere. Now, on a more local level, there are about a I mean, that, that was a... You know what? I have no idea what actually this bill is going to do. Let's just take a look at it. The Combating Organized Retail Crime Act. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see. To combat organized crime involving the illegal acquisition of retail goods for the purpose of selling those legally obtained goods through physical and online retail marketplaces. It's now been introduced to the Senate by Republicans. Um, let's see. What is it going to do? Okay. Organized crime. It's such a threat. It costs retailers $1 billion a year. Let's see here. <laughs> Do -do -do -do. Establishment of a center to combat organized retail crime. Organized retail crime coordination center. Okay. Basically just a place that coordinates with a lot of different aspects of the government, how it will be directed, uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, it'll be given training. This, I, I gotta be honest, I'm looking at this, and this looks like it would do 
absolutely nothing. There would be no additional like aid given to uh, police. Um, the duties of the center shall be. I'll just read. Off, I'll read them off real quick. Coordinating federal law enforcement activities related to organized retail crime, including investigations of national and transnational criminal organizations that are engaged in organized retail crime, which seems to me to be like a redundancy since we already have organizations that look into organized national and transnational criminal organizations. We, we already have people doing that. Um, establishing relationships with state and local law enforcement agencies and organizations, including organized retail crime associations, and sharing information regarding organized retail crime threats, such as agencies and organiz- with such agencies and organizations. Assisting state and local law enforcement agencies with their investigations of organized retail crime groups, establishing relationships with retail companies, sharing information with such companies regarding organized retail crime threats and providing mechanisms for the receipt of investigative information on such threats, establishing a secure system for sharing information regarding organized retail crime threats by leveraging existing information systems at the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Justice, tracking trends with respect to organized retail crime, releasing annual public reports of such trends, uh, supporting the provision of training and technical assistance in accordance with subsection C. So... Yeah, uh, again, this is, this is, A, not going to do a whole lot, and B, like, not, not going to stop the, the coordinated organized crime? Like, this, this is just, at best, like, more information sharing with local authorities? Um... I, I don't know. This doesn't seem to have teeth. Theft was introduced by the House of Representatives in February. We'll see if that legislation goes anywhere. Now, on a more local level, there are about a dozen state task forces investigating the issue. Homeland Security investigators say they're assisting in those efforts. And over the past three years, the agency has tripled the number of cases it's investigating, often using fraud-related and money laundering laws to open cases. But let's keep it real. Lax state laws need to be revisited. Evidence suggests that there is a small group of people committing these crimes over and over again. They should not get to take advantage of bail reform if they're recommitting the exact same crime. But also, if they commit the exact same crime multiple times, they 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 go they go to jail, they they go to prison for that. Like, if somebody continuously does shoplifting, it becomes a, a felony. Like, the idea of bail reform is just that. You know, if you are truly a danger to society, then you get kept in jail to protect the public. Otherwise, you're just saying, well, we're going to keep you in jail because you're poor and not because we need to protect the public. And that just seems uh, deeply wrong. And uh, I-, I don't know if if like somebody is uh, out on, you know, a reformed bail uh, basis and they go out and commit a crime that deepens their felony like they're going to be put in jail because they just committed another crime while they were out on their you know reformed bail period uh so i just i i don't i don't understand this shoehorning in bail reform like i don't i don't get it i i don't know that she's just I don't know that she's lying, Gamer G. She's just wrong. The, these issues have nothing to do with each other. A perfect. Ex- oh, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy, everybody. I'm sure happy to be a criminal. I just got arrested, but luckily bail reform has happened. And so now I'm out of jail. I don't have to be in jail because I'm not a menace to society. Oh, well, time to go do a time to go do another another shoplifting. 
da 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 and then you get arrested and sent to jail until your court date because you just committed another crime while out on bail. I mean, essentially, anyone who is locked up in in jail because they can't pay their bail is locked up for being too poor to have committed the crime that they did. That's that's the issue with uh, our current bail system. Example of this is highlighted in New York City. Nearly a third of all shoplifting shoplifting arrests in New York City last year involved just 327 people. Collectively, they were arrested and rearrested more than 6,000 times. In other words, there are solutions that can, you know. Just uh, wait, wait, wait. Nearly a third of all shoplifting arrests in New York City last year involved just 327 people, the police said. Collectively, they were arrested and rearrested more than 6,000 times. Just real quick. Let's see. I I guess here's here's my question. Who was getting arrested repeatedly in New York last year uh and was able to um just commit th thousands of of these crimes? Like, I mean, here, if, if each one of these people uh, did it like 20 times, right? My question is, how, how does this work, right? Because it's my understanding that if you shoplift repeatedly, right, the stuff that you steal gets tallied up. And if it's over $1,000 worth of items, well, then that misdemeanor becomes a felony. Or if it involves a stolen credit card, it's also a felony. Like, I, here, here's the thing I don't get, right? Like, even if, even if, right, these people did that, even if it's not on a felony level, if you get charged with a misdemeanor for shoplifting in New York City, you can still spend a year in prison for that. Like, not only that, just, just, just throwing this out there, right? If these companies were losing so much money on these organized criminals shoplifting, do you guys know that these companies have the right to civilly sue people who are found guilty of shoplifting from them? At least they are in New York City. You can... These companies could sue to recoup the loss of this stolen property if they wanted to, if it was such a big deal. But they don't really, do they? Interesting. They don't. Yes, but their insurance pay, uh, repays the loss. Exactly. Both the insurance pays the loss and if it was really that big of an issue, the insurance company would then sue to recoup their losses. But they don't because they don't have to. <laughs> Honestly, if somebody has been arrested 200 times for shoplifting in one year, I... I don't know, man. That sounds like you're just uh, harassing homeless people to me.
I, I don't know. Like, if, if they were actually stealing tens of thousands, as, like, the previous stories kind of frame this type of crime, if they're stealing hundreds of thousands, if they're part of an organized retail theft ring, one would think that they wouldn't just be let out to go steal more stuff. Again, this is over the course of one year? How? thousand times. In other words, there are solutions that can, you know, focus on solving this problem without reverting back to mass incarceration. In fact, we what, well the the methods that you proposed like a criminal task force is you you are proposing more people be imprisoned for this. You you were literally upset about people being let out on bail reform basis. You, 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 you were literally taking the position of more people should be in jails and prisons here. Um, and like maybe some of those people deserve to be in prison. Yeah, I think maybe if you're, you're in a retail or an organized retail crime syndicate, yeah, you should probably go to prison if you get caught doing that. But also like what spurs someone to join up with a group of shoplifters? Where, where earlier in the story, you talked about these super wealthy, uh, I guess, shoplifting criminal syndicate members. Like, who, who are they? Let, let, let's see, let's see these, uh, these wealthy individuals who are doing all of this criminal organizing with gangs and such. The issue is the reason people join these criminal uh, groups and the reason people join these gangs is because of a lack of economic opportunity. It's often because uh, they're growing up in areas that are rid riddled with crime. It's often because that they, they are doing it as a way to survive the economic conditions that they are uh, put under um, or to help others around them survive, um, given our medical health care system. Um, additionally, a lot of people get involved in this because the areas they live in have like a ghetto on one street and then like one block over it's the most opulent high-end stores you can possibly imagine putting those two disparate groups right next to each other that that level of income inequality in such proximity yeah that 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 that's like that's like having a bunch of uh gasoline flying around and during a gasoline fight and then someone lights a lights up a smoke okay yeah there's gonna be crime but the solution to that is not oh well the the systemic solution to that is not actually we need more police officers the systemic solution to that is evening out the income disparity the solution to that is providing more economic opportunity it's providing more like, you know, uh, ability to support oneself and one's family um, without having to join a gang because most people don't want to join gangs. Most people aren't like, oh boy, time, time for another wonderful day at my job with the Crips. Like, that, most people aren't, aren't like, you know, real, real all about that, okay? it's more like oh shit here we go again we should maybe consider these solutions if we want to avoid going back to the old model but look i also want to address something broader this data i've shared with you along with the current crime related trends that i've brought up multiple times on the show has rubbed other left-wing shows the wrong way in their view, stories like... But, I mean, the story itself doesn't rub me the wrong way. It's the lacking context and uh, outdated information and lack of, like, looking into the story itself. 
I mean, the fact that you brought up the Walgreens example and I could immediately Google uh, the Walgreens uh, theft and like find an article about how Walgreens actually inflated the amount of thefts that were happening and they actually had thefts go down. Like, I don't know. That seems that seems like a pretty big failure on the part of the Young Turks here. That's not really it rubbing me the wrong way. It's it's your goof up. And I, I just want you to do better. That That's what I want. Like these serve as an obstacle to some of the proposals on the left that, quite frankly, I disagree with. I've never supported police or prison abolition, and I've yet to hear a convincing argument in favor of these policies. I have, however, supported the Nordic model for criminal justice and continue to do so. Over the past month, two different people on the left, one publicly and one privately, urged me to avoid focusing on stories like organized retail theft. While the information I'm sharing is accurate, it allegedly hurts the left to share it. I want to be clear that while I agree with many left-wing policies, I'm not an activist and I'm certainly not a propagandist. My responsibility is to be truthful to my audience and to share nuances of all the complex issues we discuss every day. Accuracy, fairness, and nuance is what I want to do. And if I wanted to be a propagandist, I sure... I mean, okay, but like... You got a bunch of stuff wrong in this story. Or you repeated talking points that aren't backed up by any kind of public-facing evidence. So I, I'm just... I don't know if you're going to put out information, make it accurate. Like it'd be really interesting if like the point you were making was like really compelling here, but you you've, you've hand waved towards like, Oh, look at all the effects, but you haven't actually drawn the connection in this piece. And that's, it's a pretty big problem. As hell wouldn't be doing it for the salary I'm currently making. Thanks for watching the young Turks. So really. Hmm. That's a that's a really interesting way to end that piece. That's a that's a really interesting way to uh, to end that piece. Uh, good night, Robber Adset. Uh, pretty pretty interesting to end your uh, uh, end your piece by talking about how. Uh, you you seem to be unsatisfied with the salary you're being paid. Hey Sheckley. Um I was there, Jack, and chat tore the fuck into Anna. Yeah, I I I imagine that didn't go that didn't go well. I this is such a weird time. I, I don't know I don't know what is what is going on at TYT. Like I I've paid attention to it. I haven't talked about it a whole lot, I don't think. Um I used to have so much respect for Anna. I've had Anna on the show twice. Like it it's it's weird. Ga gas leak theory looking more likely. True. I just I know she's smart. I, I know that she's like she teaches journalism at a university level, or at least she did. Like I the the fact that she got her reporting in that story wrong is is baffling to me. You know? It, it's it's very weird. She did, Jack. She no longer does. The sources she got, uh, the info from were very carefully chosen from a right-wing perspective. Yeah. I don't know, man. It, like, 
like even even the small details like the Chiron being like citing the wrong name for the article that she was pulling information from like it's very strange like man I mean at least she still says uh she she supports the Nordic model for uh for prisons I I feel like that's I honestly I feel like that's a fairly that's a fairly decent stance you know compared to what we have right now but like man uh, the amount of venom and vitriol there. Uh, Nordic model, declaring a person an outlaw, seizing their property, granting any person the right to kill them on sight. That's the old Norse model, yeah. Maybe we should be making alliances instead of focusing on our differences. That's what I try to do every day behind the scenes, baby. That, that was just very... I, I wish I knew and understood or had insight into what's going on at the UAT, but I genuinely have no idea, chat. It's, it's been painful as somebody who uh, considers TYT pretty key to my political development early on. Honestly, believe that some are undermining Anna at TYT, like part of the staff. In in what way, Jess? Like you think there's like a background researcher who's just like feeding her conservative propaganda? Ask Benny for an interview. Maybe, maybe I will. I I'm not terribly interested in shitting all over TYT. That that's not really my goal uh kind of like what i was talking about uh with uh rico rants earlier um i'm i'm really trying to build coalitions or at least foundations for like a place where people can come together and like work on political issues even if they hate one another's guts you know that's that's the thing that's the thing that i've been focusing on right now and i feel like i feel like maybe like having an interview about how shitty TYT has been lately is uh, maybe antithetical to that that goal. 